How can we see as God sees? Perhaps the story of Enoch that we have in Moses chapter 6 could be instructive to us. If we look at verse 35, let's see what happens. The Lord spake unto Enoch and said unto him, Anoint thine eyes with clay and wash them, and thou shalt see. And Enoch did so. Now, it's interesting here that often we want to see better so we might get glasses or use a telescope or a microscope or we might try to remove things that are blocking our view. And God wanted to show Enoch incredible vistas. But he began by actually having Enoch put dirt from the earth, and the Hebrew word for earth is like the word Adam, and put it on his eyes and then to wash it clean. And then Enoch could see. In fact, we see in verse 36, and Enoch beheld the spirits that God had created. And he also beheld things which were not visible to the natural eye. And thenceforth came a saying abroad in the land, a seer, one who sees, hath the Lord raised up unto his people. This is really quite amazing. If we want to see that which we cannot with our natural eyes, we sometimes have to remove the trappings of the natural world. And that's the symbol that's happening here in the story between God and Enoch. God wants Enoch to have a physical reminder that he must remove the trappings of this world in order to see as God sees. So in our own lives, we need to do the same. Perhaps we're not seeing ourselves properly as a child of God with divine and incredible potential, or perhaps those around us as also children of God, our brothers and sisters, who also are working out their salvation before God. What if we really could see people as these essentially divine beings that they are? What if we could see the whole plan of salvation operating in the world around us and that the daily irritants or frustrations we could see as opportunities to put trust and faith in God or opportunities to serve or to find goodness where maybe it might be a little bit difficult? It actually takes time and effort. If we look at Enoch, I find it fascinating. He didn't say, you know, God, I just want to see the vision. You have all power. You could do this without making me do anything. You could just make my eyes see. And I believe God probably could do that. But what God often asks of us is to put the effort in, to get down on the ground and get that mud and put it in our eyes and then wash. You'll notice that we have ordinances or rituals in the church of washing. The most famous or well-known one is baptism, where we wash ourselves from the filth of the world. Or when you go to the temple, there's a washing and anointing ceremony where, again, you're symbolically washed from the cares and concerns of this world and the problems of this world so that you can experience something spiritual that God has to offer. So I personally find this Enoch story just so personal and valuable because it reminds me to put the effort in to follow God, put the effort in to do the hard work to see as he sees, and to trust him that when he asks me to do things that I think don't make sense, like for Enoch, it was putting mud in his eyes and having to wash it clean. That may not make a lot of sense. It reminds me that I need to trust God. I need to trust his timing. I need to trust his commands, that he has a way of working everything out. And like Enoch, if we do this, we too can be seers. We can see more fully, more purely, and more truly. Thank you.